Chapter 25 Arriving at Victoria Station, there seemed to be a lot of people heading towards the Gatwick Express, situated at the far end of the station. Mostly they were middle-aged men who, despite it not being yet 9am, were already on the beer. They stood out like any group of blokes drinking cans of red stripe wood, not to mention they were all wearing England cricket tops. More out of curiosity than anything, Stee engaged one of the less rowdy travellers about their destination. In a dreadful West Indian accent, the reply came that he was dreading. Barbados, man, for the test match. We're with the Barmy Army tour, and we'll probably head off to another island after. We'll probably lose inside three days. Stee's first holiday was going to be surrounded by people he would normally cross the road to avoid, all day drinking sports vans crammed on a plane before disembarking onto a small island. Why did Tina choose this place this week? Barmy Army! A cry went up from the lads on tour and Stee prayed to whatever lord was watching over him that he was not seated next to this lot on the nine hours to Bridgetown. His frustration with Tina turned to happy relief when he found out she'd put him in the business class as well as booking him a suite at the Barbados Hilton just outside Bridgetown. At least his flight would be free of the tour groups. In the business lounge in Gatwick, Steve found himself in the unusual position of having no work to consume him. He thought about Greta, but only because there was nothing else to think about. When they were together, one of them, usually Steve, was either asleep, in a blink, or interrupted by one of their phones. It was usually his. It never occurred to him not to answer, even if they were in the middle of an intimate romantic moment. Once again, he hoped this relationship would die on its own without him having to accelerate its demise. He still hated endings, however dead they already seemed to be. But as it hadn't yet died on its own, he knew he had to put it out of its misery like a limping greyhound. As thirty loomed and twenty was long since forgotten, he knew it could drag on and become more than it was just through laziness. In a world where it was hard enough for people to hold even the best relationships together, theirs had no chance. Given that it was a BA flight, Steve made a deliberate check at the cabin crew as he had started to do since meeting Isla the previous September. He'd not heard from her since they parted in New York, and despite looking out for her at numerous points at the airports and hotels where their paths could have crossed, he'd not even heard the name mentioned. But since he left his number and given her his card, he assumed she'd long since forgotten him. Typically, there was no sign of her, and he was not stalkerish enough to ask the crew on the board whether they knew her. That might open a can of worms that could get awkward, and if Isla didn't want him, then so be it. It was a shame. That was all. Some flights were full of memorable occurrences, whether it was an interesting conversation with someone on board or a dramatic hit of weather, aside from a hijacking, Stee had pretty much experienced most sorts of journeys. He'd even witnessed a bomb alert while grounded on the tarmac at Milan Lanate. It turned out to be nothing more than a disgruntled union official trying to hold an impromptu strike. But this flight was yet another filed under the unmemorable heading. The plane went up and he watched Goodwill Hunting for the umpteenth time. Every viewing made him dream about one day working with Elliot Smith. If ever there was a musician he wanted on his books, it was Elliot Smith, just for his work on that soundtrack alone. It was an incredible piece of art made up from a bunch of songs Smith released the year before on a small indie label called Kill Rock Stars, which encouraged Steve to keep track of him in case he ever needed newer representation. Someone like him. Even on a business class flight to a tropical island, he couldn't switch off. Once on the ground, his escape from the airport was fast. With the privilege of a business class exit from the plane, he beat the rush to the taxis for the short journey between the airport and the hotel. The view along the South Coast Road was not the one on the posters. The lack of wealth hidden from the sales pitch the Barbadian tourist board pushed. The only modern building Stee had seen since the airport stood above the small pockets of simple housing surrounding its grounds. It was grand and not in keeping with its surroundings. He was becoming bored of the trappings afforded the business traveller and having lived in Hilton hotels for the last six months, something inside him fancied a bit more rustic on this trip, but how could he complain? He'd been flown business class to Barbados and was about to spend two weeks in the best hotel in the area doing whatever he pleased.